Simply Southern is produced by the Alabama Farmers Federation and made possible with the support of Alabama Farmers Cooperative. There's nothing quite like sitting down to a home-cooked meal with fresh vegetables from the garden. With Bonnie Plants from your local quality co-op store, you can enjoy the freshest vegetables right from your own backyard. And no matter if you're a raised bed gardener, a rose gardener, or if you farm hundreds of acres, your quality co-op store has exactly what you need to get the most out of your plants. You'll always find what you need, plus friendly, knowledgeable advice at your local quality co-op store. There's one near you. What we eat, what we wear, it all starts somewhere. And if it's good, it usually starts with a farmer. And that somewhere is right here in Alabama. In a field, in a barn, on a tractor. Right now, there's a farmer starting something good for all of us. And it all starts right here in Alabama. Welcome to Simply Southern. I'm Mary Wilson. And I'm Kevin Worthington. Did you know that the average American eats almost 100 pounds of chicken every year? Well, somebody's got to produce all that poultry, and today we'll ask a farmer how he does it. Charles Lee rose above a troubled past to become a mentor for kids facing similar challenges. Through his nonprofit, That's My Child, young people are discovering their leadership potential. If you have a garden, chances are there's at least one squash plant in it. Today, Stacy Little of SouthernBite.com will show you how to make old-fashioned squash and onions. And you know it's going to be good because he makes it with bacon grease. A mantra we repeat often here on Simply Southern is that everything gets its start on a farm. From the things you eat to even what you wear and the materials used to build your home. But every now and then, even we're surprised to discover a certain type of farm. Like back in the first season of the show when I visited an earthworm farm. For me, it was finding out that there are butterfly farmers, technically called lepidopterologists. And today, we're introducing you to an Alabama butterfly farmer up in Limestone County. I was born with a love of nature and especially butterflies. So I just grew up uh, on my family's farm, uh, growing, uh, raising butterflies for fun. So I went from there and uh, started raising butterflies professionally while I was still in high school. Yes, you heard that right. John Wall is a professional butterfly farmer. And if membership in the International Butterfly Breeders Association is any indication, there are at least 150 others in the profession. I always like to say you will never find a grumpy person in the butterfly industry, um, whether it's the exhibits, whether it's the, you know, the customers or the, the growers. While there's a strong market in growing butterflies for releases at events such as weddings or funerals, John grows exclusively for exhibits. From March through October, he packages and ships 1,000 to 1,500 butterflies a week. He catches them, safely places them in wax envelopes, and cools them, which basically puts them into hibernation until they're released. John has customers across the country, including the Huntsville Botanical Gardens, where you'll find the Purdy Butterfly House. During our peak butterfly season, which is May through September of every year, we have about 1,200 different butterflies in here at one time. There is a lot of awe and excitement here in the Butterfly House. People are just so excited to be able to step into the space and be surrounded by butterflies. They're fluttering all over the place and they're coming in all different shapes and sizes, all different colors. There's nothing like walking into an exhibit and seeing a, you know, a, a little child so enthralled with that butterfly and knowing that you helped be part of that process. Like other animal farmers, John sees the animals through each stage of development, which for butterflies includes the egg, the larva or caterpillar, the chrysalis or cocoon, and the mature butterfly. And butterfly farming is actually a lot closer to any other form of farming than you might think it is. You have your, your breeding stock, you're raising the young ones for market. Think of it almost like a cow, you know, it's, it's, it's a miniature flying cow. Spend a lot of time working with plants, a lot of times working with, with uh, you know, the other environments around it, just like any farmer would. He raises a variety of species, including the always popular monarch. 
It may not be easy to say, but it is easy to understand why John enjoys his career as a leptodopterologist. Different people have different gifts, different talents. Um, I don't know if loving butterflies is a gift, but it is definitely something I was born with, and that, I, I think it comes from God. You know, that's just something that I was built with. Seeing as he has a couple decades of experience in raising butterflies, John had a couple tips for people who want to attract butterflies to their yard. That's right. First, you need nectarine plants so mature butterflies have something to eat. And it's best to plant composite flowers, something with lots of buds like lantana, butterfly bush, or dianthus. But don't forget to grow host plants. That's where butterflies would lay eggs and what the caterpillars will eat. Those plants vary by species, so you can learn more through his YouTube channel. Just search for The Butterfly Farmer. It started with a hot dog cart. Next, we'll see how hot dog sales enabled one Alabama man to fund his dream project, a nonprofit dedicated to helping young people make good choices. Paying your bills can be a hassle. With Alpha, it doesn't have to be. Customers can sign up for AutoPay and make paying your insurance easier than ever. When you sign up for AutoPay, you can save time, know exactly when the funds will be debited from your account, and reduce late or missed payments. Visit alphainsurance.com or use the Alpha To Go app to register your eligible policies today. These Alpha Insights are proudly presented by Alpha Insurance. Soybean is a very versatile product. We make crayons out of it. A lot of the combines you see rolling through the fields have a lot of plastic side panels that are made from a soy product. The soybeans that we grow on our farm mostly goes into chicken feed. Soybean production in Alabama employs over 10,000 people. We grow some of the best soybeans in the world. We go the extra mile to make sure when our name is stamped on it, we know it's the best product we can produce. Want in-depth and up-to-date information about agriculture and forestry in Alabama? Then tune in to the Alabama AgCast, a production of the Alabama Farmers Federation. New Alabama AgCast episodes drop every Wednesday. Listen to learn about a range of topics, from farm programs and trade to animal nutrition and pest management. Just search for Alabama AgCast on your favorite podcast provider or visit alphafarmers.org slash alabama dash Not littering is not hard. If you've accumulated trash in your vehicle, don't throw it out the window. Throw it in a can at the gas pump. Throw it in a can at a storefront. Throw it in a can at work. Or throw it in the can at home. Just don't drop it on Alabama. Not littering is not hard. Brought to you by People Against a Littered State, the Alabama Department of Transportation, the Alabama Broadcasters Association, and this station. Redland Farms grew to Redland Cotton with the help of Alabama Farm Credit. After World War II, my grandpa bought land to start a farm, which was passed down to my dad. Now, my dad and I are producing quality American products from the cotton we grow right here on this farm. Through our relationship with Alabama Farm Credit, we are bringing jobs to Alabama and creating a legacy for future generations to come. Wear long pants, long sleeve shirts, and closed toed shoes. Don't be ticked. Use repellents with 20% DEET on skin and 0.5% permethrin on gear and clothing. Don't be ticked. Avoid sitting on rotten logs or stumps. Don't be ticked. Protect yourself from serious tick borne illnesses and seek timely treatment to prevent long term problems. No hunters were angered in the making of this film.